Hello, hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Julie and in this week's sewing tutorial I'm going to make a woman's suit from a thrifted curtain. The suit has a pants, like you can see, a matching fabric belt and a blazer with functional pockets. My phone fits in these. These pockets are amazing. I made this from the same fabric that I used for my button-up skirt and matching beret. This is a curtain that I bought in a thrift store. There are four of them in total and I only bought two, what I think is kind of sad now. Okay, I will stop talking and start sewing. I started this project by making the pants or trousers, whatever you want to call them. So I did this by selecting a pair of loose fitting pants, but they cannot be too loose. And I used this as a pattern. I numbered the pants so I would be sure that I copied each side. Then you draw this on your fabric four times. Add a little extra to the top and to the bottom. Cut all of these pieces out. It's smart to leave a little for seam allowance. Okay, now let's make this into a pants. Lay two pieces, right sides together, and sew the straight edge and the other edge into the crotch, but do not sew the crotch. Do this for the other piece as well, so you turn the four pieces into two pieces. To make these two pieces into a pants, you need to turn one of them inside out and leave the other one like it is normal. Put the two pieces in each other and pin the sides together to make the crotch. This might seem a little complicated on camera, but once you will do it, it will be very clear what sides you need to sew together, I promise. If you enjoyed this video so far, you can support me and my channel by giving this video the big thumbs up and leaving a comment down below. This way you show YouTube that you enjoy my videos and hopefully they will show it to more people. Thank you! Once you sew them together, you just need to pull the one leg out of the other one and ta-da, you have a pants! So I put the pants on and I marked the spots where I wanted to hem the edges of the pants and then I folded them over and hemmed them. I added an elastic into this, so I folded the edge down into a loop and marked an opening. Then I sewn this into a loop, but I didn't sew the opening, so I got some space to add the elastic in later. Measure the elastic around your waist, pin a safety pin to the end, I found this giant one in the thrift store and use a safety pin to guide you through the loop and then when you're through you sew the elastic together or you can knot it together and then you close the opening. Ta-da! Your pants is finished! Okay, now you have a pants, let's make the matching blazer. I took my favorite blazers and tucked the sleeve inside. I put in some pins to keep them in their place. Then I copied the shape of the blazer onto the curtain to make a new blazer. I wanted mine to be a little longer than this blazer was, so I added a little extra on the bottom. This drawing doesn't have to be 100% correct, you just need to make sure that you copied the sleeves, like the armholes well, that's the most important part. Now 
Then I adjusted the neckline a little. Now fold this piece you just created in half and copy this to make the front part. Add at least 7 cm or 3 inches to the front piece. Then I cut this piece out and copied it so I would have two front pieces. Be sure that you make them opposites of each other. Layer three pieces on each other, right sides together, and sew the sides and the shoulders. Do not sew the armholes or the neckline, of course. Next, I made the folded down neckline. I first hemmed the sides. For a folded down neckline like this, you need to hem the sides to the other side than you would usually do. It's best to fold the neckline as you want it to be, and this way you can see in what direction you need to hem the sides. This is a lot easier than it sounds, I promise. And once this was all hemmed, I folded the neckline in the way and size I wanted it to be and then I attached a part of it to the fabric so it would stay in place when I wore it. I didn't attach the whole fold, just like a little more than half of it. I marked this spot because it's easier. Here I'm just making sure that I attach both necklines evenly. Then I hemmed the bottom part of the blazer. Now I'm going to add this neckband on top. I measured 7 cm or 2.7 inches on each side of the fold. Then I laid it straight on some fabric and used the markings to draw a line. Draw this line into a rectangle with a width of 12 cm or 5 inches. Cut this out and fold it double. Mark an opening. Now you sew all the sides except the opening. Now use the opening to turn the neckband around. And then you pin the neckband to the blazer and sew it in place with a straight stitch. It helps to still have your markings, so be sure to mark it good. Now this blazer needs some sleeves. Unless you want to start a trend for a blazer without sleeves, in that case, you go girl! Fold a piece of fabric double and lay your armhole on top of it. Draw the shape of the armhole on the fabric. Then I used a shirt with a good fit and I drew the rest of the sleeve like this. Cut this out. Make sure that you cut both sides evenly as this is folded. Next I zigzag stitched around the edges of the sleeves to prevent them from unraveling. I actually did this for all the pieces, but I just didn't always show it in the video.
Then I folded the sleeves double, right sides together and I sewed them with a straight stitch. Turn your blazer inside out and pin the sleeves to the armhole. Sew this using a straight stitch. Once my sleeves were attached, I cut the ends of the beginning of the sleeves off and hemmed them for a neat result. The very last step to finish this blazer is to add the amazing pockets! I went for functional rectangle pockets that can actually hold stuff like my phone. Lay your hand or phone on a leftover piece of fabric and draw a rectangle around it. Cut them out, then I zigzagged around the edges of the pockets to protect them because I don't have a fancy machine to do this for me. Then I folded the sides of the pockets and I sewn them to give them a nice finish. Once this is done, find a good place where you want your pockets to be and pin them in place. Now sew each edge of the pocket to the blazer except the upper edge of course. Unless you want this kind of useless show pockets, then you can sew all edges. Once my woman's suit was finished, I decided that this could really use a belt. So I made a fabric covered belt with a fabric covered belt buckle. I found this old broken belt, so I cut the strap off and I'm going to cover the belt buckle with fabric. I'm going to do this with double sided tape, you can find this in any hobby store. Cut the tape and tape it around the belt buckle. I first did like this closing thingy and then I cut a piece of fabric and I taped the fabric around the closing thingy. One that was done, I taped the rest of the buckle. I taped over the middle part and then I cut this open and just kind of pushed the tape all around it. It's a bit of a sticky mess but the end result is totally worth it. Once your full buckle is covered in tape, you can cover it with fabric. Then I cut the fabric belt. I cut a strap that was 40 cm or 16 inches longer than my waist. Then I zigzagged around the edges to protect them and I hemmed the sides for a nicer finish. Do a 
attached this strap around my buckle, I needed to make a hole for it so the iron thingy would fit in it. I marked the spot and made a buttonhole with my machine. Then I cut my buttonhole open and I slid the iron thingy through the buttonhole and I sewed the fabric in place. Then I fit the belt around my waist and I sewn two other buttonholes so the belt would fit me. I also made a little loop to finish the belt off nicely. Sew a strap that is twice the width of your fabric belt strap and sew this into a loop. Now you can easily slide this loop over the belt and congrats, your fabric covered belt is finished! Okay, that was it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you can support me and my channel by giving it a big thumbs up and leaving a comment down below. This shows on YouTube that you really like my videos and hopefully this way they will show it to more people. You can also follow me on Instagram to see more photos of my project if you prefer that. Or you can always support me on buymeacoffee.com. And also don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. See you next week. Bye.